Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, here with a wiring guide for the white version of Corsair's Shift RM1000X. This is a Type 5 power supply unit, ATX 3.0, giving you the option to plug in a variety of cables in your system. So I'm going to show you how to connect them up, where to wire them, and what cables you need for which devices and why. You can see this is a modular power supply with all the ports clearly labeled, but I'm going to show you where to plug things in, what cables you need for what, and how to connect them up, and then how to tidy the cables. The other advantage of this is, as you can see, the cables are quite thin. Cables that come with this power supply are quite tiny in their design, so they've got nice thin Type 5 cables, rather than the big chunky ones that are going to take up a lot of space at the rear. You also only have to use the cables that you're going to be using in your build. So you can see we've got a lot of cables here, but you don't actually have to plug them all in if you're not going to be using them. So I'm going to show you the ones that you will need to plug in, and then you can minimize the rest and make things nice and neat in your build. So the ports are clearly labeled in here. We've got motherboard, CPU, SATA, and PATA. We're gonna start with the motherboard power cables, kicking off with the 24 pin motherboard cable. And this plugs in on the right hand side of your motherboard and has two power cables that connect the power supply end. Note that the type five cables are smaller on one end than on the other. So you can't plug these in the wrong way around. But you'll notice that it's split into two parts. You have one longer part that plugs in on the far left here, and then the other part just next to that below. And all the cables are important to plug in so that they fully seat and clip into the power supply unit. But the 24 pin power cable, you need to make sure especially that it's pushed all the way in. If it doesn't clip in properly, then you will find that your PC doesn't power on. I'm showing you how to plug these cables in here outside of the build so that you can see the process for doing so. Obviously you wouldn't plug your power supply into your motherboard until it's actually in the case, but this is how you would do it. The CPU power cables, the two of those clearly marked CPU on one end. The type five end plugs into the PCIe slash CPU connectors on the power supply. And then the other ends plug into your motherboard at the top left. Now, this is going to vary from motherboard to motherboard. Sometimes you'll only have one power connector that you need. Sometimes it's two. Sometimes it's one eight pin and one six pin. You can see the top left here, we've got two eight pins on this Strix motherboard, but yours might be slightly different. And note that these cables can be split apart, so you can actually pull them apart. So you might find you have to plug one connector in with eight pins and the other one you have to split it in half and plug one four pin in instead. So it might be slightly different from motherboard to motherboard or for just demonstrate that you can easily do that with these cables and just split them. Alternatively, they both plug in here on the top left. And there's a clip on one side that hooks over the power connector on the motherboard so they clearly click into place. Next up, the SSDs and hard disk drives. These are done with the SATA cables, which you have loads of. And you'll notice that these cables are daisy chainable. So you've got the Type 5 connector on one end and then you've got multiple flat connectors on the other. This will mean that you can plug in multiple drives into one power cable or use several cables and have several drives in your build with relative ease. So you can plug your SSD into this or your hard disk drive or two SSDs or an SSD and maybe a fan controller depending on what you're doing with the build or an RGB controller. So you can plug it in like that. Now this is an L-shaped connector. There's an L-shape on the inside of the cable so you can only plug it in one way. So watch out for that because it's easy to get that wrong and try and force it in then have issues. But you can see if you just look at the connector on the drive and on the cable, you should be able to slot that in quite easily. And you can just daisy chain things up like that nice and easily and plug them in. Again, I'm showing you this clearly outside the build so you can see it nice and easily, but I'll show you where to plug it in in the build final when we get there. Now there's then a data cable which came with your motherboard, which then connects on the right hand side here from one end and then the other end plugs into the drive and you do that for every drive that you're using in this case an ssd and a hard disk drive and then those drives have got both power and data transfer to the motherboard with ease next i'm using a 40 series graphics card but this power supply unit does come with cables for other gpus as well so amd intel and older nvidia graphics cards as the standard 8-pin power cables on it and you've got several of them. So here's a demo of how that would work using Corsair's black version of the RM shift. So you have these power cables which connect on one end to the power supply unit and then the other end to your graphics card and traditionally GPUs have 8-pin PCIe power connectors on them. 
with one end split into two parts. This 3090 has two of those ports, so we need two cables, one for each port. You have to pinch the end together that's marked PCIe and push it in so it clips in. You need to make sure both these parts of the connectors are fully all the way in. Otherwise, your GPU might not get enough power, which can mean that it won't run properly. And both cables need to be plugged into the GPU. And then the other end plugs into the PCIe slash CPU end on the power supply unit. Use two separate cables for this, and that will ensure your GPU gets maximum amount of power out of it. Now, this power supply has multiple cables, as you can see. So if you need more, you can just plug more in and use the same sort of logic and ensure that your graphics card is getting maximum power, even if it needs three or more power connectors, for example. Another reason you might use a PCIe power connector is for something like Heights Thick Q60 all-in-one cooler, which is a nice chunky boy of a 240mm all-in-one cooler, which requires PCIe power. So this has a cable that comes out of it that plugs into the radiator that then powers the two pumps and the fans connected to it, and that then requires a PCIe power connector from your power supply unit. So as well as needing power for your graphics card, you might need it with this. I've also seen it with Corsair's IQ Link system, where that too requires PCIe power. So you might need a power supply unit like this that has multiple connectors on it. You can see this PSU has connections for PCIe power, USB and CPU fan. So you'd use that same sort of cable logic, but instead of pushing them together, like you can see me doing here, as you would for your GPU, you just leave it split apart and you use the bit with six pins on it to connect the power for the AIO to the power supply unit. But it still plugs into the same part on the power supply unit end, as in the PCIe end of the power supply on that modular port there. So you should find a good number of these PCIe power connectors for your GPU and other things included as standard. PSU also has the 12 volt high power cable. This is a cable specifically for the 40 series and beyond graphics cards, which essentially has one connector on one end and then the two 8 pin PCIe power cables on the other. This means that your 40 series card can get the juice it needs, but you don't have to use those horrible adapters that you get with some of the graphics cards. So you can see we've got the two cables that plug into the PCIe slash CPU power ports on the power supply unit. And then the other end plugs into your graphics card once it's installed and it slots in and make sure you push that all the way in. Take care with this because obviously some people have had problems with theirs melting because they didn't properly seat that cable in. The other cable you might need is a Molex cable, which is included. And I'm using it here with the Razer Chroma RGB controller. But other things that you might use it for include custom loop reservoir pump combos and perhaps DVD or CD drives. But I'm using it here to control the RGB lighting of some uni fans using the Razer Chroma RGB hub, which allows you to plug that in and then you can power the RGB and control that with Synapse and with other things too. But it requires this Molex cable, which is included. Now you might not have to use this cable. A lot of builds I've done don't require this, but you can use it by plugging into the SATA slash PATA port on the power supply end. And then the other end just plugs into the connector or device that you're trying to use. This is a little bit fiddly and you might find the pins wobble around inside the connector and so it can be a little bit tricky to connect the two. I found I had to wiggle mine around a little bit for example so you might have trouble seating it. As you can see it's daisy chainable so you can connect multiple things to it. So now we've worked out what cables we're going to be using on the power supply and in our build we're just going to make sure they're all installed beforehand plug all your cables in if you're using another power supply which isn't side mounted this can be beneficial because it makes it much easier because you won't then have to fiddle around inside the case trying to plug cables in afterwards if you missed some or if you made a mistake and you need to put extra cables in it's much easier to do it beforehand just so we've got the logic sorted out and then that power supply mounts fan downwards into the case so that this can pull cold air from below and you'll see here what i was talking about with the cables they're now on the side instead of towards that fan, so they're mostly out of the way. We then use the four power supply unit screws that are either included with the case or with your power supply to secure the four corners of this to the case at the rear so it holds it in place. And then I'd recommend going about some cable tidying. Now you'll see there's no channels as such, and 
a lack of places to put cables, so it's definitely beneficial having these Corsair ones which are particularly thin. I found it was useful to tie the cables together on their own as well, especially because you've got these flat power cables. You can just use the plastic cable ties to put them together and then that helps to neaten things up. And then you'll find there are some loops throughout the case that you can then use to tie the cables down as well. And those two things together neaten things up a little bit. So run the two eight pin CPU power cables on the right hand side here towards the top. And then you'll be able to plug it in easily once the motherboard's installed and secure those down and try and get them neatly put into the corners there. There is a slight edge you can see which you can potentially tuck the cables into but there is no real major channeling which is one downside to the case which becomes a bit more of a problem on the left hand side but you can see me using multiple cable ties in various points around here to keep this nice and neat it makes it easier to put the back on it also just keeps things pretty tidy did the same thing with the 24 pin power cable this one is a little bit thicker but nowhere near as thick as some of the other ones you'll see in other power supplies and again you can just tie them together and also use those loops to keep them in place throughout the build there this is the best way to do it because obviously what we want to do is keep the cables out of the bottom of the cage because theoretically in other cases you might better just tuck away a lot of the excess cable into the bottom of the PC. Here you don't want to do that because you'll be blocking that bottom fan and that could be a problem. Don't forget while we're doing this to plug in your SSD so we use those flat SATA power cables to plug in the SSDs to make sure they've got power. You can see just about stretches here, but you do need to make sure that you are plugging the cable in the right way, which you can see even a seasoned builder like myself still gets that wrong. He tries to put it in the wrong way around. You think I'd have learned by now, but no. And then I just use some clippers to cut off the cable ties so there's no excess plastic in here. So this is all neatened up and it's much easier to do this now than it is later on once you've got other things installed. Plus with these cables out of the way, you can then worry about the other ones and negotiating those around too. Once we've finished that and then we've installed the motherboard and secured it into place with the standoff screws, what we're going to do is then repeat the process I showed you already, but plugging that 24 pin power cable on the right hand side, then the two eight pin CPU power cables on the top left and making sure they're all secured well, especially that 24 pin, because if that's not pushed in properly, your PC might not boot. So that's one of the indicators there that there might be a problem. These other cables might be a bit more fiddly, by the way, if you've already installed an AIO, for example. So it's much easier to do it now before you install fans and coolers. And then for the graphics card, depending on how you're installing it, I've got a vertical GPU mount here. So I'm going to run the cables underneath from the rear. There's actually a hole in the bottom of this case, which makes it easier. But you need to plug the cables into it and run them from the back. So we've got that 12 volt high power cable just running from the back and then plugging in at the rear. Now you can see what I showed you outside the build though, because it's a lot harder to get this on video. And then hopefully you end up with a build that's fully complete and looking pretty nice. If you found this video useful, check out the link in the description to other videos that are related to this, including the build on this particular case. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.